Now I'm gonna cook fish and chips. It's a recipe known the world over. This way is inspired by the chef Heston Blumenthal, so I'm going to attempt to create it somewhere near the way Heston did. The obvious place to start is with the fish. As a flat fish, the turbot has a spine running through the middle, which you can see with this line, and then two bones that go out sideways each side. And we have a fillet on top and a fillet below. So what I do is I split it down the middle, following that line on the backbone. I go around the head, making sure I don't miss any of that precious and expensive meat. Then all I'm doing, I go straight down to the bone, I turn sideways, and I follow the line of that base bone. And what you'll do is just releasing it very carefully, is you'll hear the knife scraping off the bone, pulling away that precious meat. Release it from the skirt, leaving the perfect fillet. Now we flip the fish over and repeat the same process on the underside. Now I've got the four fillets off, I'm just gonna remove the skin. Just place it on your board, and I use my knife to remove that skirt first. Then I place the thickest end of the fillet away from me. I get my knife, run it down until I reach the skin. Turn sideways, I push the knife away, releasing that beautiful flesh from the skin. And there's one last stage to this fish. It's gonna make a massive difference. We're just gonna give the fish a bath for about 20 minutes. What happens then is the salt draws out the moisture, firms up the flesh, and should give us a lovely rainbow cut when we cook the fish later. 20 minutes has passed, the brine has done its thing. And what I do is dry it off on a tray with a little bit of cloth, and then it's gonna go into the fridge until we cook it and firm it up. Now the best part of fish and chips for me is the batter on the fish. Now this recipe uses a piece of kitchen equipment, a siphon gun, to make the lightest, crispiest, best batter that I've ever tasted. I'm gonna start with some plain flour, then an equal quantity of rice flour, which you can get in any Asian supermarkets. Then we're gonna add a teaspoon of baking powder. Then we go with six grams of salt. Again, very important that the batter is seasoned. A tablespoon of honey, which obviously adds some nice sweetness but also a beautiful golden brown color to the batter. Next, I go in with 180 mils of vodka and 180 mils of a blonde lager. Now what's very important here is that we add it right at the end so we keep all those air bubbles in there. What we do is we just bring it together using a whisk and then it's ready for the siphon gun. Lid goes on the gun and I'm gonna add my gas. So we shake it, and what you're gonna be left with is a really light shaving cream style batter. I'm gonna stick this in the fridge till we're ready to use it, so it chills down. Now fish and chips for me needs tartar sauce. I'm gonna start off with some small capers. I'm not gonna chop them up. I want us to bite into them, so you get that really salty, acidic taste. After that, I'm gonna add some little cornichons. Again, like the capers, Lovely and acidic. Now for our herbs, I'm using dill and parsley. So all that chopped leaf and stalk, next into the bowl. I'm gonna bind this together with mayonnaise, which I've made earlier here. Now I want this just to bring the sauce together. I don't want it swimming in that mayonnaise. Once that's bound together, I'm just gonna finish it with a touch of lemon zest and a squeeze of the juice. We just leave that in the fridge till we're ready to serve. Chips. This recipe is completely over the top, but they're gonna be sensational. To start off, need to cut them into chip shape. We're looking for approximately seven centimeters long, two centimeters wide. So the first of cooking them three times. In here, I have two liters of water. I'm going in with 25 grams of sea salt. We're gonna cook them in here for about 15, 16 minutes. Chips have been in about 15 minutes. I'm gonna have a quick look here. And yeah, you can see what we're after. So have a look there. I know they're done because they're just starting to fall apart at the edges. So I drain them off very, very carefully on a cloth. They went to the fridge, which is very, very dry. That's gonna take off all the excess steam. I'm gonna show you what they look like in an hour.
Now, after an hour, this is what they look like. They've gone nice and dry on the outside and they're still quite fluffy. So for the second cook, we're gonna go into the fryer. Don't overload the basket. I'm gonna place them in. I'm gonna cook these for about 10 or 11 minutes until they're just turning yellow. Now, 10 minutes later, second cooking is done. As you'll see there, the outside of the chip has just started to go light gold and yellow, ready to go back in the fridge. Time to cook the fish. So I've just taken a nice large portion off the fillets that were brined earlier. So I take a little bit of our excess rice flour and I'm gonna dust the fish in this. Now, when we get our siphon gun, and we're gonna spray our batter into the bowl so we can coat the fish in it. Now while it's still light and airy, I'm gonna dip our fish in, making sure it's nicely coated, and then straighten the fryer at 200 degrees Celsius. Takes about five minutes, and then it's beautifully golden brown. I'm gonna take it out and just rest it on a cloth for a couple of minutes, drain off some of that excess fat, but look at that. <laughs> We're gonna continue using that fryer, because what you have here are our chips. They're gonna be finished the same temperature as the fish, 200 degrees, until they're really light golden brown and crispy. While our chips are cooking, time to plate up. I'm gonna start with a nice ring of our tartar sauce. Ooh. Chips are done. Beautiful and golden brown. Drain them off. I'm gonna plate them up like little standing soldiers in our side service. There you have it. Fish and chips, tartar sauce inspired by the great Heston Blumenthal not like you find in the chipper.